So I've always said it's good to look at different news sources, especially, shall we say, across across the water, across the stream, shall we say, uh, over in Europe. Because at the moment, as you can see in France, big, big farmer protests are like, well, if you look at some of the videos, you know, <laughs> uh, there was a farmer, I think, on um, who was being interviewed, and he said, Oh, these these farmers who are like saying, "Yeah, we're gonna starve out Paris." No, th those those are just you know really few of them. They're just you know they're just the extremists. I'm just here you know because I want to help you know protect my farm. <laughs> but you know, there you go. Um, but I I think it's in, in interesting to sort of look at what is going on in Europe, especially as you are seeing the far right really go after farmers and. Bear in mind, the French left are coming out here and saying, well, look, yes, these farmers do have problems, but the big problem is, is that it is these, these right wing, um, you know, trying to sort of rile up these farmers, get them onto their side and get them to, so we say, on their political side and get them to sort of, you know, do the type of things that you know they would like to do on the on the right wing. And as I said before, just a, just a couple of weeks ago, it is really important that we do not ignore groups like this, groups that traditionally, maybe in the past, the left wing has ignored or not really taken seriously, or gone, you know, farming's not really you know our key issue. Sure, we'll talk about it, but you know. It, it, it's honestly really difficult, but in, in this country, the farmers, you know, do not have as much power as they as they do in France. So I think it's rather interesting to have a look at this to see if now that these sort of big French protests are happening, there's a lot of people going, "Well, hold on, Macron, why aren't you calling in the army, the you know, the the national guard, etc.?" Say right. If you're if you are threatening to, or at least in your actions, you are cutting off and effectively blockading, um, you know, a, a a city which is going to have you know significant problems. Um, yeah, maybe it's time to take care of you, because a lot of people on the left are pointing out that if a a left wing climate activist group came out and did something very similar to what these farmers are doing, they would have been cleaned up in like maybe less than a week um so it is interesting that and, and i say this now because you've got to ex, ex, ex you know i this does not refer to sort of uk farmers this is very very much talking about what is going on in europe and the issues that you know farmers sometimes you know do have because they do have issues but they also can cause problems as well and this is what this article is talking about that farmers get away too easily when they cause problems and it is because they are seen especially in europe as quite somewhat a powerful force especially as you can see in france because there is no way if farmers in the uk did this to london they would get away with it because they are not as powerful as um as as sort of they are in in, in france so i want to make that expressly clear um it is an interesting perspective, and I think given the fact what's going on in Europe, I think it's well worth having a look at. So we're going to have a look at that today and see what's, see what's going on um, on this and what the conversation is is going on ar around this at the moment, because I think it's kind of interesting in, in many ways. So I'd be interested to see, um, like I say, especially if you are, are in farming or agriculture or anything like that, and you are in the UK, what do you think to this conversation? I'd be very interested to see what your thoughts would be. So. As always, uh, thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel. Like I say, you can click the like, you can click the share button. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button. And down below, there are links to my Patreon page, the one of Dacia link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And of course, there's the YouTube thank you button and of course, the Pony Club down below as well. So off we go to a Belgium source for this called Knack. I think that's how you say it. Uh, like I say, not a Belgium. So this is um, translated as well. So I do apologize um, if this sort of reads weird, like I say, I have to rely on the sort of the translation that Google is giving me. So, the title is Farmers Get Away Too Easily with the Problems That They Cause. 
So, playing firefighters and stoke brands on the Muskin Viaduct on the Antwerp Ring, blocking motorways towards Brussels, fill critical bridges and roundabouts with tractors, closing ports of distribution centres for department stores. Once again, things cannot go well with farmers who over the past half century have felt an irresistible urge to thoroughly disrupt social functioning, and not only in us, but also in our neighbouring countries and elsewhere in Europe. The consequences are, of course, palpable. People cannot get to work or to the hospital, where they, uh, where they finally had an appointment after months of wait waiting. Schools are now switching to social, social distance learning. Drivers get stuck on shortcuts. Journalists, Joel DiCalia, Mrs. D. D. Alf, the, I have no idea how you spell that. The D. Alpha Black on canvas. And that became news. Imagine that. People are rearranging agendas, postponing trips. Employer organizations are now warning of economic losses. No one can predict how long this misery will last. And many fear that things will get out of hand uh, here. And that they and that and that their incidents involving the truck drivers have already been reported. Yet, it is striking how cautiously the authorities are dealing with the farmers' demonstrations. Not everyone can enjoy the same tolerance. In recent years, climate activists have been regularly arrested and convicted, both in our country and in neighbouring countries, for causing traffic and other nuisance. They wanted to draw attention to the, lax to the lax in the tackling of global warming. Greenpeace activists who have protested against gas imports uh, in the port of uh, Zabrug ended up in jail within 48 hours. British climate activists who blocked the bridge on the London Ring were given a three-year prison sentence, a very dissuasive effect for others. Dutch climate activists were also recently sentenced for community service for incitement to what they called of blocking off a traffic axis. A poet who was allowed to speak at the Flemish Folk Festival on January the 6th and then took the opportunity to draw attention to the, to the Palestinians uh, in the Gaza Strip was arrested and locked up for six hours. But farmers can turn the country upside down with impunity. It is symbolic of the fact that they have been able to easily get away with socially disruptive activities for decades. And I want to remind you, this isn't a, a UK thing. Um, you know, farmers here in the UK would not be treated in the same way. They do not have um, as much political power. Um, but equally, I, I'd be interested in, in hearing, you know, if you're in Europe and you're experiencing what's going on, I'd love to hear what your views um, on, on what's going on this with farmers. I'd love to sort of see what you've got to say uh, sort of in response to this. It'd be very, very interesting. Um, so they get away with socially disruptive activities for decades. Uh, so they were, so can you continue, um, so we continue from there. They place a very strong claim on both our environmental and our health. They make a substantial contribution to global warming, and they are partly responsible for the nitrogen pollu pollution that not only disrupts our nature, but is also very harmful to our health. They are spraying pesticides en masse, which is becoming increasingly clear that they are taking a very serious health toll without being much done about it. The environmental and health costs for agriculture activities are unashamedly passed on to society and not included in the price of our food, allowing farmers' lobbies to claim that our food has never been as cheap as it is now. And yes, farmers have to work hard for a meager wage. They should certainly earn more. But this also applies to people in other important sectors, such as healthcare and education, which have far less stronger lolly, far less stronger lolly, can't even say it, far less stronger lobbies. Uh, the farmers' union has more power in our country than the super rich, says economist Gert Pershman, um, also this week uh, in an author article. But you could just as well say that about the broadband one of the most super rich. The assets they are now holding compared to the MRBB above the Bourbon amount, approximately over 5.5 billion euros and continues to rise. It is about high time that policymakers talk with farmers instead of about farmers, says Brandok uh, chairman of Le uh, Leo Census, who sat for the CD and V in the Flemish parliament for years before coming the head of, uh, of Bordebon. 
uh, census who uh, should not complain about policy attention for his sector. A number of CDD uh, for the members, including ministers, do appear to be in front of the rows for Bob and Symposia. Over the past 20 years, the party has sympathetically uh, been very much responsible for agriculture. There has also been very direct line from the farmers' policy all along. This has mainly resulted to the satisfaction of the farmers' union in pushing on the brakes for years to avoid having take uh, taking too many environmental or other measures that non-policy is now taking its revenge. It would also help if the policy did talk a little less with the farmers' union and a little more with the farmers themselves. It would be better for them to crawl out uh, from under the wings some of uh, from some of that yoke of the broad of the again I don't I don't know if I'm proud to this right of the broader broad bond and stand with their own rights. It would be quite a few observances, academic and otherwise, that would argue that the agricultural model that the Farmers' Union promotes primarily serves its own interests and is secondarily to those of the ordinary farmer. Farmers, like teachers, also complain about the administrative nuisances, and rightly so. But the sector has had a significant effect on our well-being and our living environment, so it is not bad that it is subject to more scrutiny than average, especially because in the past it did not always demonstrate a very friendly attitude towards the rest of the society. Less than 30 years ago, a hormone, a hormone mafia felt so strongly that it ordered the murder of a veterinarian examiner who, much to dismay, was doing his job and there were and are numerous findings about illegal discharges of manure, air scrubbers, and other installations to reduce pollution that are installed, but not always used because they require too much energy. I did not know that. I imagine that for a second, the, the farmers' union to try and um to try and stop this, or of course, you know, there are laws in place now. They felt so strongly about that. They had a murder of a veterinary examiner. I have never heard about that before, but wow. Um as I said before at the beginning, it just goes to show you how in other countries, especially in some European countries, farmers' lobbies are so, so strong. I do not see the NUF having such power to be able to order you know, a potential hit like that. Um, again, I want to reaffirm just how powerful in, in some other countries the farmers' lobbies really, really are. Um. So, Cien, uh, Cienis, uh, again, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, and his puppet in the Flemish government, the Minister of Agriculture, Joe Bonds, a party member and fellow member of that region, are sym symptomatically trying to de uh, derive the soil by stating that farmers already have made many efforts to reduce their environmental pollution. It would still be wrong, but the reality is that their efforts have mainly involved picking low, low-hanging fruit and had virtually no progress has been ever made in the last 10 years. In contrast to what the industry is doing, for example, which, according to farmers, relies too much on preferential treatment and on government uh, of the government that can count. Farmers must be pushed to take effective environmental and public health measures. This is the harsh reality. But they do not. They do not accept that. They want to follow their own agenda. Cesis and his and his associates are appointing. Are attempting to postpone all government measures to try and curb environmental and other nuisances from agriculture, such as the nitrogen decree, for as long as possible, if necessary, with legal demolition work. And then they will feel that things are getting difficult. And they send tractors out onto the road to try and announce that our food security is at risk. When you see how many people are struggling with obesity, it seems that food security is not that bad. While climate environmental activists who really have good intentions for our future and that of the next generations are, are prosecuted because they tried to strive for a better world, something is now fundamentally wrong with our system. So as you can see, especially in Europe, Farmers have a lot of power and influence, a lot of power and influence. Like I say, I, I really cannot see the NUF <laughs> ordering a hit ordering like a hit squad to you know take out a, a vet. Um yeah, I, I never knew about that. But that, again, this is the kind of thing you learn when you sort of start to look at you know um 
foreign press and what's going on in in, in other areas. It's, it's very interesting for sure. Um, but yeah, this is the type of thing though that does you know sort of need to be uh, addressed here. You know what are you know the issues that farmers are facing? They are right. They do contribute a lot to you know, a, a environmental pollution. Now, we are seeing in the UK at the moment, the ELMs that, oh, we're going to sort of pay you to be environmental land managers, but it's not reducing pollution. It's like, well, if you plant some hedgerows, if you plant some trees, you do all this, you know, nice, pretty, you know, sounding things, you get money for it. But as we said before, that really only affects farmers, or at least beneficial to farmers, that have large tracts of land that can afford to do that. We've seen, for example, hill farmers. They rely a lot on their wool and, of course, sheep farming. That's their land that they can't really grow crops. And the ELM does not really help them on that front. So, once again, there's a lot of stuff we should be looking at, how we can help farmers and, and what we can do. But, of course, in Europe, you've got very different problems affecting sort of you know uh the farmers and of course they are very powerful lobby groups which as you can see you know pretty influential and will go out of their way to to sort of try and stop these nuisances uh as, as was said there even you know try some um you know legal demolition to try and get rid of these you know rules and laws but at the end of the day maybe what we need to do is look at, can we put some money into R&D in this? Can we look at other, other ways where we can get more technology going on here? Do we need to put more research into, you know, farming technology? Do, do we need to look at, you know, uh, yeah, again, I, I'm, I'm not too sure because <laughs> it's it's something I've myself never thought about, but it's it's possible maybe and and other things that you know there can be you know done on on this regard but it's 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 a question of of how do you do it and as i said if if the left ignores these people well who do they listen to they listen to the right wing who then come out and say oh my god these these incredible heroes who feed our nation um you know who are they going to listen to at the end of the day so this is where it comes to You've got to have policy that provides these farmers with solutions to the problem they're facing. It's not just um, sort of in Europe, but again, they're having a very different fight, as you can see now, with sort of the very, very powerful farming lobbies. Whereas in the UK, you've got farmers who actively just being ignored, uh, unfortunately, as they have been, unfortunately, for quite a long time. And we've now got an opportunity where farmers for the first time in a long time, turned away from the Conservatives, as have many rural communities now. So there is an opportunity there to go in and get those votes. But to do that, you have to have the policy to help, you know, solve, you know, the, these problems. And it, it, it's stuff like what do you do about schools in, in, in rural areas? There's, there's a ton of other sort of questions that, you know, need to be asked about uh, about rural areas that, you know, should be solved as well, not just, of course, the needs for farmers as well. And unfortunately, something, as I said before, traditionally the left has sort of ignored. Rather than focus on, uh, you know, rural and, and agricultural issues, we've very sort of focused on town and sort of city issues. Um, but, you know, there you go. Uh, and we've got to sort of find and have a look at sort of solutions like that. And I would love to speak to people in like the 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 nuf or or even you know in inside labor because there is a a labor uh uh, uh so it, it's farm uh, farmers for labor um i think they're called i can't remember if it's um labors for farmer or farmers for labor uh, yeah but yeah um again i would i would love to sp sort of speak to them and see what they want would would want policy wise and why that policy sort of would be you know sort of effective but you know, we try. <laughs> and of course, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. And of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.